Salam Kelo Raga. Hello, I'm going to say she gives a privilege to be here as an honor. Um, I wanted to ask, like, I'm originally from Pakistan, but I grew up in Saudi Arabia. And uh, so my parents used to follow Hanafi, so we are Sunni Hanafi. But when I grew up, I found out that there are lots of bidas that we do. We do Quran Khani, we do, uh, you know, 40 days after death, we do another Quran Khani, and when we buy a new house, we do Quran Khani, things like that. So I slowly stepped away, away from Hanafi. is the one who we are ordered to follow. Allah says in the Quran, وَيَوْمَ يُنَادِيهِمْ فَيَقُولُ مَاذَا أَجَبْتُمُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ On the day of judgment, Allah will call them and say, what did you respond to the messengers? So Allah will not ask you on the day of judgment, what did you respond to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal or Imam Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i or to Imam Malik ibn Anas or to Imam Abu Hanifa. He will ask you, what did you respond? What did you do with this verse of Quran that came to you or with this authentic hadith that was reported to you? This is what Allah will ask you upon. However, we most likely are not qualified to know what is a Quran verse or what is a hadith. The vast majority of Muslims, especially non-Arabs, if you say to them, tell me which surah and raise your hands if you know you might get a prize you might I'm, I'm not, i don't know the organizers mashallah they have a lot of money they invited me in so they can afford it so raise your hand if you know which surah this is <laughs> okay mashallah what chapter it's a hadith it's not an ayah and the majority, I almost thought, I thought it was in an ikhlas. No, it's not, it's not. So, this is a problem. Lots of the Muslims don't know the difference between a verse of the Quran and a hadith. Then they say, oh, should we follow an imam? Of course you should follow an imam. You don't have what it takes. What is this skew? Is there fool? <laughs> Come on, guys. Are you really making me scared? All of these are for questions. This is going to be a long night. Yalla, inshallah. So, we don't have the ability, the tools needed to segregate or to differentiate which, which is right and which is wrong. Because we're laymen. I'm a layman in mechanics. So, when my car breaks, I'm not going to open the hood and say, hmm, let me think. No. I'm not going to think. I'm going to call AAA. I'm going to call a mechanic. I'm going to call a friend that knows how to deal with it. The same thing in Islam. You don't have what it takes to come and think, mm, I'm going to follow this. No, the Hanafi school is wrong. What do you know? What's right and what's wrong? You don't have the knowledge to discredit an opinion from Hanafi school or Shafi school or whatever school. Just because you read an article here or there doesn't make you a student of knowledge. If you're a highly decorated student of knowledge, knows Arabic, knows the Quran, knows the Hadith, and can cross-reference and examine different opinions of schools of thought, yes, you can do that. Otherwise, you have to follow not a sect, not a madhab. You have to follow an imam, a trusted individual that you know his religious commitment, that he does not have any weird views, that he's always been consistent, that his knowledge is acceptable. He doesn't have weird opinions that go against the mainstream of Islam. And you should follow him in whatever he tells you. Most likely this individual would be a follower of one of the four main schools of thought. So you follow Bin Baz, you're in good hands. You follow Bin Uthaymeen, you're in excellent hands with the grace of Allah. And the more these are prone to fall into temptation and fitna, the better they are. They're dead. So they're definitely not gonna go for something uh, that's 
that suits the highest bidder. The living ones, mm, you never know. If the, I'm a family man. If you push me too far, I just might. So you never know. No, the, the, follow those who you can trust and you can believe in. And on the day of judgment, you're saved. Allah knows best.